Hello and happy Friday, Paso Vivo family. I am Eleanor and welcome to another uh, Paso Vivo cooking cuisine. And today we have a whole different ball game. We are going to be making vegan mozzarella cheese with our uh, Tuscan balsamic, or sorry, Tuscan extra virgin olive oil. Let me get my big game face on. Uh, I'm super excited about this because this is something completely new to me and I'm really intrigued in how this happens. <laughs> uh, also, I'm really intrigued in uh, the vegan creamery concept and asking a Jennifer Golden, who is the person we're going to be talking today, who is the owner of the Vreamery, all about that, the whole, the whole thing, because I'm really intrigued in all the different types of uh, vegan cheese that can be created and how, and how it all came to be. So we are going to be using our Tuscan extra virgin olive oil to create a vegan mozzarella cheese, right? I know, I'm excited. Uh, so we're gonna wait for them to hop on and uh, she's going to walk us through how to pull it all together. They actually have DIY kits that you can buy so you can create your own mozzarella cheese at home. So uh, vegan mozzarella cheese at home. So that's even more exciting because if you know people who have dairy intolerances, if you know people who um, are walking that line and are not quite sure if they're intolerant or it, it, they're, they're kind of checking it out, this is a perfect gift for them because they get to really put be hands on, they really get to check in with how it's created and be able to enjoy the uh, final product. And I, to me, I'm a big fan of enjoying every type of food and cuisine and seeing what my body responds well to and what my body responds negatively to and going from there. I think it's really important. And those of us may have spent a lifetime thinking that we um, were okay with dairy um, and maybe the rest of the people who lived around you were not okay with you having dairy, <laughs> right? Who knows? So. This is an opportunity to really kind of normalize the concept and uh, see that being dairy free does not mean that you are completely out of the loop with yummy, delicious food. So that is what uh, Jennifer is going to be kind of educating us about today. And uh, if you are interested and want to check into all of that, the Vreemary is actually right pretty much downtown Paso. It's right on Spring Street. It is in that uh, Paso Market Walk um, that is just such fun to just wander around. There's everything from wineries to gelato to noodles to um, cupcakes to just, it's, it's visually pleasing to walk through. And there's so many great little bits and pieces, uh, all locally created um, food and goods. So uh, I think there's a cider place there now. So definitely worth going and checking out. It's, I want to say maybe four blocks down from main downtown. So the square and all of that. So if you want to do a walk, you can do a walk. If you want to hop in the car and drive down, you can do that as well. It's very easy walk. It's a very easy drive right down spring and you will be able to see all the things. So uh, all the, uh, the the beauty of the Paso Market Walk, it's a great place to buy some food and sit outside and eat. If you have a dog, it's a great location to be in. And um, you'll be able to also check out the Vreemery, which is who we're working with today. So hopefully we will get them on soon so that um, we can really kind of sink our teeth into this, uh, the, the vegan concept. Um, with that being said, and as we're kind of uh, in a holding pattern, I do want to make sure that you guys know that next week is happy hour. How can a week be happy hour? I don't know, but I'm gonna make it. The whole week's happy hour. Um, no, so next week, next Friday, two o'clock, we are returning 
the beauty of the happy hour to our Paso Olivo stage. Uh, we are going to be welcoming Refined in. Everybody knows Refined, everybody loves Refined. That distillery uh, is the one that really uh, started distilleries, I, I, I believe, in, uh, in the, this, this area, in the Central Coast area. So I'm looking forward to having them. They are um, kind of an offshoot of Villacana Winery. So if you've passed by Villacana, you've passed by Refined. But you've also, if you've done any meandering around and cocktail drinking in downtown Paso, you have definitely seen Refined products um, around. They are... Um, true and steadfast, great spirits. So um, just gorgeous spirits. And I'm really looking forward to the two drinks that Evan is making. Uh, so Evan is the mixologist that's going to be joining us next week. And he is making, wait for it, a refined gin gimlet and a refined whiskey sour. Okay, you know, that's that sounds good. But guess what? He's using our bourbon barrel aged maple syrup. He's using our winter ambrosia vinegar. He's using our cilantro lime olive oil. He's using our raspberry basil vinegar and the sriracha salt to rim the glass of the whiskey sour. Okay, yeah, let that all sink in. How fantastic is that? Uh, so two cocktails are coming your way two o'clock next week. I know you're gonna be here. You've got, you've got to be here for that because that's going to be exciting. So we will see you next week. I'm not, I'm not signing off, I promise. <laughs> um, we will be seeing you next week, 2 o'clock, for another happy hour, which we haven't done in a while. And we all need happy hours in our lives. It's Friday, you know. It's Oh, the sun is shining. It's getting warm out. So this is a perfect time to bring back a little bit of a happy hour. So we will have that next week awesome bundle um, so that uh, we can get you going. And if you do see that bundle, the, the raspberry basil vinegar, the cilantro lime, the uh, olive oil, the sriracha salt, which those three, by the way, are awesome for fajitas, for um, tacos, for guacamole. I mean, you're gonna be using it a ton no matter what, but you're also apparently going to be putting it in cocktails. Who knew? So uh, those guys are in the bundle next week, along with the winter ambrosia vinegar um, and that bourbon barrel aged maple syrup. So that is a whole bunch of goodness. Fantastic idea if you want to join the club to just buy that bundle and get going because that is beautiful bundle for the spring and summer months and uh, evidently cocktail ready. Also, remember that when I'm giving you the heads up about next week, that means that you can get that bundle now, uh, send it to some friends, and everybody do your own mixology at home. Um, you can do this live with us. You can be asking questions to the mixologist as we are doing it. So I know that quite often we're watching this maybe tomorrow, maybe five hours from now, but you can also be right here online. You have us at your attention. So you can fire any questions you want at us. Put us, put us on the spot. Uh, that's what we're here for, to answer any of your questions too. So keep that in mind because um, we, are, we wanna make sure that you can you know, create your own cocktails at home. That's why we're doing this. And then you can um, Take pictures of it and show them, show them off to everybody and say, look at this, I made a cocktail with olive oil in it. I love blowing people's minds with the fact that you can do cocktails with olive oil. Frankly, now if I go to um, a bar, uh, you know, that focuses on bespoke cocktails and um, kind of the, the higher class mixologists, I'm expecting olive oil in at least one drink because it is a completely different mouthfeel. It is a completely different taste. It does elevate the cocktail a lot. Um, it's obviously, if it's an extra virgin olive oil, if it's one of ours, you know it's a high quality item. So you know what that says, um, what that, how that speaks to, um, to where you're, with that location, that if they're using high quality items, you know their drinks are gonna be great. So. I, I keep that I keep a, a lookout for balsamics and olive oils in cocktails now when I'm look, going around and going out I'm out on the town because I do so often. Um, so 
I uh, look at if anybody's looking at the comments, then you know what's going on. We are waiting for Jennifer to hop on. She's on, but she's not on with me. So, so I, don't adjust your screens. She will be on in a second. And uh, we, for now, we will make sure that she's getting herself sorted. Uh, and that's exactly why we started at 155, so that everybody could get their footing. Because technology, right? Yeah? Yes. <laughs> if, if I could for this whole year, right? We've been doing this. You and I, we've been together. We've been doing this back and forth for about 55 shows now. I know. Let that blow your mind. So I think we've encountered pretty much everything that we can encounter. I think we've learned cooking skills that uh, we never knew we had. And um, we have also uh, interacted with all the beauty and the headaches that technology brings with us. So, <laughs> uh, and that's kind of the fun of it. It's life, it's whatever. Um, so also, uh, I love the fact that, it, and it, when I think back, all the different skills that we've picked up, if you're watching all these shows, if you're hopping onto YouTube uh, and watching these shows, um, kind of back to back, if you're seeing all of the amazing executive chefs that we have interacted with, uh, the amazing distilleries and mixologists that we have interacted with, uh, the skills that we have learned through the last year, I know people are saying like, what skills did you pick up during, during COVID? I, I honestly, I mean, we, we fried a chicken in extra virgin olive oil. We have uh, made gelato. We have made bread. We have made um, cocktails of all different types, whether it's martinis, old fashions. Um, we had a cocktail that was uh, through a Calwise distillery where he put it in the freezer and froze the oil on the top so it layered up. Do you guys remember that? So the 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 skills that we have picked up throughout uh we've done some amazing different salmon uh trout oh my gosh the trout that we've uh experienced uh, this is what i love about this is that i feel like if you guys have been logging on if you are kind of catching up and if you're watching them now if you're kind of doing a, <laughs> a netflix thing and just kind of cruising through all of them uh you will it's amazing the different skills that we have picked up from all of the different executive chefs. And it makes sense. These executive chefs have traveled the world. If you look at um, all of the different executive chefs we've had and all the places they've talked about and the skills that they have brought, it has been from all over the world. And it's uh, pretty astonishing that we've been able to gather it all up here in the Central Coast and get them all here to you. So um, we're really lucky and I, it's, it's kind of nice. You know what I feel bad about is that I haven't used the skills at home half as much as I should have, but they're in here. And that is kind of important-ish. I mean, <laughs> like if, if uh, you know, gun to my head, I would be able <laughs> to, to fry a chicken in olive oil. So there you go, skills. So, um, We've got the mozzarella that we're gonna be making today, and then we've got the um, cocktails that we're gonna be using tomorrow. I see a little thing here, and I just wanna make sure. Uh, uh, I was seeing if there was anything I could do on my end to get everybody logged in. But on my end so far, um, I don't think there is. So uh, hopefully they will hop on soon and we'll get them going. Either if it's with their login or a friend's phone, they will figure it out and we'll be able to hop on. Um, again, we are using, oh, I haven't, gosh, I've been talking about the olive oils and stuff and I have not shown you any of them. <laughs> So today we're using this guy. Uh, you guys know our Tuscan extra virgin olive oil because it is one of the four extra virgin olive oils that we have. It, we consider it kind of the bigger, bolder oil, uh, extra virgin olive oil, because it is so beautifully balanced, but so well nuanced between the buttery, the peppery, the grassy, um, the, uh, the, the kind of the pungency that we get 
from a good extra virgin olive oil. This guy has some a good balance of polyphenols in there, some good health benefits, but just delicious. Um, and uh, so this is one that I, I can use. It has a smoke point of 425, so you can cook with it, you can deep fry with it, you can put it on salads, you can dip with it. This is one that um, has become a, a favorite. My, my two favorites are the Cucina and the Tuscan. There's Cucina, Classic, California, and Tuscan. And what brought me in was the Cucina, or was the California, and throughout the time working with Paso Olivo, I have ended up falling in love with this guy. So it's really interesting how your palate changes. It's interesting from year to year how much the Evos change too, because as you know, it's new oil every single year. So that means that we have harvest in uh, November. If you ever get a chance to come visit us during that time, it is so much fun to do. So come visit us during harvest, check out harvest. You get to taste oil that just came right out of the spout. It is amazing. Uh, but then also you are seeing the fact that we have 12 different varieties of olives. We're pressing them all separately, tasting them all separately, and then blending them. So uh, we are going to be using each one of those olives as a blend to create our four extra virgin olive oil blends that you see on our tasting sheet if you come in. If you go to our website, that's what you're going to see. So we're blending every single year and each year the blends are gonna look a little different too. So it's fun each year, come in, visit, retaste. What, I have a viewer request, what? Wait, wait, nobody's saying anything. Are they coming? They're coming, they're waiting, we're waiting. Okay, maybe I was a little premature <laughs> about my excitement. They're coming, I swear. I see it on the bottom of my screen. So um, yeah, we're using the Tuscan today and that is kind of its, its birth story, <laughs> uh, yeah. Definitely worth checking out. Always worth coming in and doing a tasting of the flight of the first four extra virgin olive oil because uh, they're always a little different. Everybody's palate is different. Um, it's really interesting to come in with a group of people and see what everybody's feedback is because each time it's going to be different, which is, it's fun. So yeah, um, we, it says waiting for the green room. So I am patiently waiting, although it's not like, in the top three of my skills is patience. It's <laughs> uh, just a uh, squirrel. Oh, it said unable to join. Guys, I'm gonna wait for the, the thumbs up to do this, but I might tap out and tap back in again if that means that they can join better. It said unable to join for some reason. I don't know why. We want you here, we promise. But you know how it is. Um, we'll try, I see this thing. Yes, is it requesting? I'm gonna, I'm gonna request them back. Ha! Oh, what? Hey! Woo! Hey. Look at us! Look at I don't us! Know. Ha ha, technology, you didn't get us this time. Sorry. We got it. Hey, Eleanor. Hello. <laughs> I bring out my old phone, and and that for some reason is working. My new one doesn't have that screen to join by request. So is, isn't that fun? That's it's wow. just so incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, we're good. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I there's there's so many questions I have, and I'm so excited about this. So I'm just. Um, I mean, I did, I did your intro. I'm very excited to have you on. I really, the whole concept kind of blows my mind and intrigues me. Like I said, um, I'm always open and interested in different cuisines and styles of food because we all come into this world thinking everything's good and maybe it's not. And like I said, maybe your roommates would love you to not eat dairy. And maybe you think you're doing just fine with it. Maybe you're not. So uh, I think there's quite a few people out there who would benefit from maybe introducing some dairy-free stuff into their lives, some vegan stuff into their lives. Just no for fun. Reason. 
Yeah, no reason not to. Exactly. You know, foods are really healthy and it's, you know, baby steps for everybody. I think it's really a personal choice and all of our bodies are different. And it's, for me, what I always try to inspire and educate people towards is listening to their body. I mean, someone might not tolerate gluten well and another person can eat it and have no problem. So it's really about attuning to oneself. So um, is that how you got involved in this, uh, in, in vegan cooking? Um, well, I guess there's a couple of ways that I got involved. One, um, I've just always loved cooking and hospitality and entertaining. So I've always loved cooking. As I got closer to 50, I sort of began to become more sensitive to dairy. And when I was a child, I was allergic to milk as a, as a single digit child. Um, at that time, we didn't even have almond milk or alternatives. There was mocha mix which is still a thing today, but that's what I would use in my cereal. Mm -hmm. So I basically um, grew up on that. And then really, I mean, I, I wasn't a real big milk drinker as a general rule, but I love cheese. And so I basically, um, as I was aging, began to have a little bit more sensitivity. And that coupled with watching my father, who had lived a really healthy lifestyle, um, did kind of like all these conventional things, um, as far as like, you know, meditated and did a lot of uh, humanitarian work and he was sober and he ate a Mediterranean diet. Well, he ended up still getting all, uh, not Alzheimer's, but a form of dementia that's pretty close to the Alzheimer end of the spectrum. And it really inspired me to start learning about nutrition and brain health and gut health. And that's what catapulted me into the whole plant-based foods um, awareness. And, um, and so then I started playing with vegan cheese because I love cheese and I just got amazing feedback from people and started farmer's markets and it kind of, it all happened from there. And the fact that you are one of three in the nation and the first one this side of Texas blows my mind. That is yeah. so cool. Let me make a distinction with that because there are other vegan cheese shops, but it, it would be like a single cheese maker opens a shop and sells their cheese. Mm -hmm. So I'm the third vegan cheese shop that curates artisan vegan cheese makers from across the country. So that's the distinction because there is a great place in Los Angeles called Gromage, which is French for, well, fromage, but with a V. Yeah. Um, and he catered the royal wedding um, with Harry and Meghan. So, you know, but that's his cheese at his shop and his sandwiches with his cheese. He doesn't curate, like I do, dozens of different artisan vegan cheese makers. So I'm about championing the artisan maker as well as um, higher level consciousness eating. I, I, I love that. And also, I mean, it's, it's supporting uh, the, the industry, which is important as well, and yeah. keeping that up and going. So uh, yeah. talk to us about the, the what we're doing today. Okay, great. So um, I, like I said, I have been at Farmer's Markets for the last three years. Since opening our shop, we now are not doing Farmer's Markets, but we have our three, uh, our, our two signature lines, our cashew bream cheeses, and then we have these DIY kits where you can do these at home. Oh, I have them over here, um, but we have six different ones. So today we're making mozzarella. And what's really fun about these is that they're really, really versatile. So whenever I'm talking to people like at our shop, I'll encourage them to add special ingredients. So like you could add sun-dried tomatoes and, and, and basil and pine nuts, or today we're gonna add mushrooms and some herbs. So you really have a lot of freedom in um, crafting a cheese at home that is really signature and special to you and what you wanna create. Um, this is also a highly meltable cheese, so it's perfect for pizza, quesadilla, grilled cheese. Um, but in this instance, we're doing a little bit of a variation of, of uh, that and making a cheese that's much better for, say, charcuterie plate um, because we're using some cashews as well to give the cheese some more body instead of it being such a meltable cheese. Oh, nice. Oh, I got it. I, oh, well, I'm just going to let you go. I'm super, I'm super looking forward to this. My brain is, is all over the place. So tell us how. So a couple of caveats. Basically, there's two ingredients that you need. Oil, two tablespoons of oil. And in this instance, we're using your guys' fabulous Tuscan olive oil. And you need a cup and a half of plant milk. 
In this instance, so I've got my cup and a half of plant milk, but what I've done to this is I actually soaked some cashews overnight to, um, it helps to make it more bioavailable and kind of helps to pre-digest it, if you will. Um, and then what I did is I blended it in a blender to come up with a cashew cream. So this is, as you can see, very thick. It's not even pouring out. This is the base of a lot of vegan cheeses. It's just cashew, water, and then you add your probiotic to culture it and get that tang that's like inherent in a lot of uh, cheese, uh, conventional cheese. So this reflects a plant milk mixed with some of the cashews and blended to being very thin. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take your cup and a half of your um, plant milk, and we're going to... Well, I'm whisking in this case because I didn't want to have the noise of a blender interrupting for a minute. Um, but I'm emptying the, the contents of the DIY kit into the milk. And then we're just going to whisk it. And ideally, you want it to kind of hang out for about 60 seconds so that the two primary ingredients in here, which are... Irish sea moss and tapioca starch, which means that this is a fully allergen-free recipe. There's no allergens in this at all. Um, no soy, no gluten, no you know lactose, nothing like that. So you you whisk it. Um, give me one second. All right. So you just you whisk that, and it needs about 60 seconds for those two dry ingredients to really hydrate. Um, and then we're going to add our oil. And typically the ingredients or the recipe calls for two tablespoons and I'm just going to eyeball it um, because I have a general sense. And one of the things that's really lovely about this recipe or, or these DIY kits is they're super um, flexible. Like you can't really mess it up. It's pretty hard to mess it up. So if you put a little too much oil, no big deal. If you um, don't put enough, again, no big deal. But the oil really helps to give it mouth, the mouth feel of a cheese. Otherwise, it's just going to be um, better, like I said, for the melted environment, where if you don't have the oil, you're not going to really miss it because it's in a melted condition. But on a charcuterie with uh, you know, crackers, for example, you want to definitely um, have some fat in there. And so if you can show this bread, so basically we're, we're putting it in the pan and it only takes a few like minutes. On this side. Yeah, keep going down. <laughs> so basically we're, you know, we're going to stir it the whole time. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah. you can go, yeah. And in a minute <laughs> when it starts to thicken up, I will show you um, what, what that looks like. So Certain ingredients you'd want to wait till the very end to add. In this instance, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and add the mushrooms and the herbs now. Um, I'm trying to think what would be an example of something that you would probably wait till the end. Like if I were putting in fresh herbs, I'd wait till the very end because otherwise they're going to change in their color a little because they've been cooked. Are these and dried so mushrooms or fresh mushrooms? Actually, um, shiitake mushrooms in a jar okay a lot of times i like i'm a huge fan of trader joe's i get they have in the fr uh, the frozen section they have some marinated mushrooms and i'll use those but if brad if you can show them this again you can already see it starting to thicken oh my gosh that's crazy yeah can you see and but it, it's still not quite there we still have a couple minutes to go and we're at and kind we, of medium heat yeah like a medium heat um, there are different things that you can use for, what's that? Oh, it's just a blip. Okay, so um, different things you can use. A lot of times I'll use these springform pans for my mold. Um, I found this one recently. I'm excited that it has a mandala in it, so I'm thinking that's going to look beautiful. And then I was thinking today, and I, I might not be able to do it, um, but I, you can also use a scooper like this, and you can drop it into ice cold water and make balls and then have that hang out in that water. Um, oh. Like you buy them, you know, the, I forget the names of them, but the different kinds of balls that are sus suspended in water. Yeah. Oh, wow. Here you can see 
see that it's um, it's starting to thicken up. That's quite a bit of mushroom that I added because you can definitely see the flex. But I need to keep it on the heat. <laughs> yep, we got it. Oh, it's beautiful. Actually, your your shirt kind of matches too. You've got the the black flakes on the shirt. You did that on purpose. <laughs> uh, and why out of the four extra virgin olive oils did you choose the biggest, boldest out of them? I'm really into flavor. So a lot of my cheeses, they are very big in their flavor. I like big red wine. I like big red or big, you know, flavored foods. Yeah. A lot, I mean, a lot of the cheeses that you'll buy, like at Whole Foods that are vegan, they're kind of homogenized and really mainstream. Mm -hmm. And I don't shy away from flavor because I feel like these are really like vegan cheese is quite expensive when you're getting the artisan level cheeses. And when, um, I guess I just feel like you don't need a whole lot. So you're getting a lot more bang for your buck, you know? I love it. Yeah. I mean, it, it absolutely makes sense to me. I was just really interested to see, because I, I, like I had mentioned, I love the, the, the fact that you're using the Tuscan. I love the Tuscan olive oil. It does have such, it's no shrinking violet, but that's what you want in a cheese. Yeah. You don't want just an ordinary kind of run of the mill. You want something that really speaks to you. Yeah, so I want to show this to you. So this is really thick. When you do it with just the plant milk, it's a lot thinner. And it's you can literally like pour it into the mold. This is not going to be a, like that because the cashew has now thickened it up. So, so but it is, I can tell, and in the kit it tells you how to, how you know when it's ready because you drop a little bit on your counter on a plate and give it a second and it'll it'll get hard like pretty much on the fly and then you know okay it's it's ready to go so i know from experience that this is ready to go so i'm going to do i want to try this mold because i've never used it before the mandala and did you just see that plop in i don't know if you could see that but so there's one we also have this guy and what I'd like to do with this, so this is the end result. And this has oh, wow. on it. So basically what you would do is, sorry, take, take some edible flowers. Now I forage for these. This is the perfect time of year to find edible flowers all over the area. And I just put it down into the, into the mold here. And then, Brad, can you maybe come over? And then I'm just basically taking this and plopping it. There it is. Whoa. And then I'm just kind of patting it down. This is the bottom, so it's okay if it's a little unattractive because <laughs> it's going to be the bottom of the cheese. And like you said, I mean, this is – the, the flowers, the beauty of it is because, yeah, you're thinking maybe putting it onto our sh charcuterie plate, bringing it out when you're doing some wine tasting, gifting it, for example. A um, lot of a lot of different options when you make it so gorgeous. So this is, um, I was, I don't know if you can really see it. Let's try it like this. So this is just a little piece that dropped, but it, you know, it's already hard. Yeah. Um, because it's not, you know, this thick. But this will take inside of an hour. It'll be hard enough that you can pop the, the ring and open it up and um, have your cheese firm enough to release from the mold. And then ideally, you at that moment, if you wanted, you could cut it and put it on a pizza. But if you're wanting to serve it beautifully like the with the flowers and everything, you really want to put it in the refrigerator perhaps overnight so that it gets really it has time to really get hard through and through. And then what I will do... Give me one sec to go back out of frame so I can move some things I'd like to show you. I'm going to cut open the one that um, I showed you a minute ago. And while you do that, I'm letting you know that everybody who has hopped on is completely in love with you. So uh, just, you. just putting that out there that you have a lot of fan people out there. All right. Check it. Okay, so this is the one. This is TV Magic. I did it yesterday. But this is what it will look like when in an hour when we release it from that mold. So pretty. Wow. That's how it is. I mean, it, you know. Oh, that looks delicious. 
legitimate cheese. Yeah. And, and it melts. I mean, even this that would be better with cheese and crackers than on a pizza, but it will melt beautifully on a pizza too. Wow. But using a plant milk will make it lazier melt because it's thinner, you know, to start out with. Wow. Yeah, so that's it. And then I'll just, you know, we've got, um, we have herb dill and chili pepper. Our two best sellers are our truffle and smokehouse. Mm. Um, and then we've got Mellow Jack and this mozzarella. They're on our website. They're at our store. If you haven't come in, been into our store or to the Paso Market Walk, Eleanor, you've got to come in. It's so beautiful. They've done an amazing job. Debbie Baldwin just killed it with how she how she imagined this beautiful place. And it's quite luxurious. And we have a lot of great food and drinks in there. It is aesthetically pleasing. It is definitely just a joy to the senses to walk through there. Uh, absolutely. And all the different mm -hmm. goodies that you can get there. Um, it's definitely a must if you're visiting Paso. It's a mm -hmm. must to go check out. Um, it's on spring. And what's the... Is that 22nd? It's between 18th and 19th Street. I'm directionally challenged, so that makes sense that I would think it was 22nd. Okay, 18th and 19th, yeah. folks. Don't listen to me. So it's yeah. on spring, 18th and 19th. Uh, definitely walkable, but you, you can yeah. hop in the car and drive if you're downtown. So once you park, you're going to walk around, bring the dog, sit outside. Yeah. There's, there's all kinds of goodies. There's wine. There's There's dessert. There's all just They're new th new things new food. things for you not the predictable same old same old you will go and find artisan items from our area that are all yeah. going to kind of blow your mind so yeah breakfast lunch and dinner so and soon we'll have more entertainment they had at some point brought in some live music but that's always been the intention is to have live music on a regular basis do little yoga classes and things on the grass um, so it's quite a lovely location. Yeah, it is. It absolutely is. Uh, so you mentioned your website. Let's talk about your hours of operation, your mm -hmm. website. I just want to make sure people know how to find you. Yeah. So, we, um, so the whole marketplace is open um, Tuesday through Sunday. However, at the end of the month, I believe Memorial Day will be opening up on Mondays. Most of us will be open on Mondays. There are a couple of the businesses that are I believe are going to remain closed on Mondays. Um, we are, everybody has different hours. Our hours are 11 to 6, except Saturday and Sunday. We open at 9. We're testing out a breakfast program. Mm -hmm. And if that takes fruit, we'll continue to stay open for breakfast. Um, so we do like bagels and cream cheese with vegan sashimi and different beautiful ingredients. We um, do a, a lovely overnight oats and a cultured cashew chia cream uh, that's like a yogurt, if you will. And um, we, of course, have our paninis. And um, what's the other thing? Oh, we are doing these breakfast burritos, like egg and potato egg breakfast burritos that are just, I mean, they're selling all day long. So yeah, it's oh, not yeah, just. That, but I yeah. Bet. All right. Yeah. And your website? Uh, it's thevreamery.com. And I just say it's like the creamery, but a V is in vegan instead of C is in cow. So thevreamery.com. <laughs> and we're also, of course, on Instagram and um Sharing automatically to Facebook, uh, not really too active on Facebook, but Instagram, we're, we're pretty much like there every day. So, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for this. This has been eye-opening. It's really intriguing and uh, something that I can see being a fun activity for families as well and educational uh, for families mm -hmm. as well as for somebody who actually really needs it. So it's kind of, it spans, it's, it spans quite the, 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 the array of people and, and population. How long will that cheese go for now, like in the fridge? How long will it last? So this will last typically as long as the stamp on the milk, like on the milk plant or plant milk that you use. Makes but sense. I mean, as long as you're keeping moisture away, like you don't have condensation, I mean, it can last like a month or so. Huh. Um, we have plenty of other cheeses that we have, um, like brie and blue, that are legitimate moldy rinded cheeses. We have aged cheeses that are authentic. I mean, just like in European traditional cheese making where they're aged and flipped every day. Um, and so all of those pretty much will last a long time too. They just like a conventional cheese, they get stronger with tang and sharpness the, the longer that it's aged. So it's, um, it's very, very commensurate to your conventional dairy. And in most instances, if I put out a plate, a platter for you, 
and you weren't thinking about it and you didn't know any better, you would never think that these are not animal based. You most people would never even know. Right. I yeah. I think that's fantastic. I love the fact that you're uh we're pushing people to think outside the box. Yeah. I just paused. I don't know. I'm back. Um, and yeah, it's, I, I love the, the fact that it's, uh, we, we are thinking outside of the box. We're adding a healthier maybe note to everybody's lifestyle. So thank you so much for that. We yeah. appreciate you taking care of us. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, everybody check out their uh, website, check out their Instagram, follow them on Instagram. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's so intriguing. I love it so much. And the fact that I, that, that, that's just a Saturday project for me. I love the idea of making cheese yeah. at home. So thank you so much for being here and available for, to us. Sorry about the techno technological hiccup in the beginning, but we're good yeah. again. Thank you everyone for joining. And um, uh, hopefully we'll see you at the Vreemary soon. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. Absolutely. Happy Friday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Um, I'm just going to make sure I cover again the fact that we've got uh, a happy hour next week at two. So we've got the cheeses. Now we need the cocktails to go with the cheeses. So the Refined is going to join us. Evan is going to join us from Refined. He is going to be making a whiskey sour and a gin gimlet. So make sure you're buying their whiskey and their gin from Refined and then hop on over to our website, pick up. We've got the winter ambrosia, the raspberry basil uh, vinegar. So these guys, along with the sriracha sea salt and the cilantro lime olive oil, all going to be in the cocktails. And as a little sweet addition, he's also putting in that bourbon barrel aged maple syrup into one of the cocktails. So join us next week for yummy cocktails. Uh, we're, we're here to help you out across the board, folks. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Jennifer Golden, for your education you. and uh, your passion. And we will see you at the store. All right. Cheers. Bye, guys. Have a fantastic Bye. weekend. It was a pleasure. Yeah.